going live. You're live. Good morning. Good morning, YouTube family. My TikTok people, you are here also. They have agreed to behave. Because when you got company at the house, don't act no fool. No, just get on, just sit down and do what you're supposed to do. All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm excited to be here. Please let me know how you are doing on your fast. If you're fasting now or if you're holding the information for a future season, that's okay, too. The point of the matter is, is that we are supposed to be resource centers. We're supposed to have equipping. We're supposed to have uh, 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 tools, books, everything that we need in order to pass along to our brothers and sisters who are just coming into the faith or who just really want to know. I've had so many people ask questions about fasting and also confirmations from other people that, hey, God told me to start a fast. God wanted me to fast. And here you go talking about fasting. Here you go. I'm minding my business eating my tater chips. And here you go talking about fasting. I've had that, okay? So you guys, some of you guys are going well, but uh, just hold up a second because the flesh men are act a fool up in here, up in here. I'm talking about all up in here. The, your flesh, <laughs> your flesh, your flesh is going to act a fool about day number four or five. Yeah. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and pray. I'm going to keep this song going for a little bit until the Lord says shift. And we're going to get into the lesson today. We are continuing and hopefully to wrap up the 12 rewards of fasting here. And then we're going to go into God's chosen fast. Okay. And we're going to talk about that for the, we're going to talk about that for the rest of the month, because it's just not enough to give a one or two day teaching and think you got it. No, honey. You know why? Because fasting is one of the spiritual disciplines that the sons and daughters of God, we're supposed to be fasting anyway. Can you say I'm supposed to be fasting anyway? <laughs> yes, Linda. We're supposed to be fasting anyway. So God, I thank you. God, I thank you because this is the day that you've made. This is your chosen fast to, to, to break the chains and the bondages of wickedness that has held us fast, held us hard, held us captive. Woo, for so many years, God, we are determined and it is our heart to hear you as we fast. God, we thank you that according to your word over in James 1 and let me find the scripture. I don't like butchering scripture, y'all. I don't like saying it. it says something like no, mm -mm, no. Let me let me just let me just hold it. Let me find the let me find the paper. OK, so we need to get back to the paper. OK, because the word words matter. All right, you two. Hold on. I'm putting my I'm putting my. The word is heavy. Putting the word on you on the computer. Um, and I don't want to zap it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, James 1 and 5. Lord, we thank you that according to James 1 and 5, you said, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproach or fault finding and it will be given to him only verse number six only it must be in faith that he acts with no wavering no hesitating no doubting for the one who wavers hesitates doubts it's like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and a thither that means you all over the place you know anybody that's all over the place have you been guilty of being all over the place? I ain't nobody gonna raise their hand on that. Ha! <laughs> Blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks from the Lord for being as he is a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute. He is unstable and unreliable, unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels and decides. Have you ever been in a position you've decided something that then you go back and go, oh, did I do? Did I make the right decision? 
Did I make, wait a minute. Should I have said yes? And I said, no. Should I have said no when I should have said yes? That's called being double-minded. But you know what? Double-minded, being double-minded can be taught, especially if you live, if you grew up in a home where there was a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty, even a lot of poverty, like I did. Bless God for my mama. She did her absolute best. And I love that woman. But we grew up in some fear. I grew up very fear-based, very fear-based. But as you learn and grow and trust the Lord, that fear will be dissolved. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you because the good work that you've begun, according to Philippians 1 and 6, you're going to perform it. You're going to keep right on doing it. He don't stop working until you stop moving. And even then, he's patiently waiting. Can you say he's patiently waiting? He is patiently waiting for you. He waiting on us. He waiting on us. His promises are yes and amen. What he has already destined and ordained us to do, it's already set in stone. It's already set in his book. We have to agree with him. And one of the things fasting does is it causes us to come into agreement with the will of God. Yeah. And that's a big reason why the enemy is big mad, even about this teaching. Really, really is because he does not want us. The enemy, not only the enemy called the devil, but the enemy called the OU. Honey, don't you know you got an enemy on the inside? Can you say on the inside? On the inside called the OU. So yesterday was the introduction. And today is part two. So yesterday we read the scripture. Romans 7, let's go over there, Romans 7, Romans 7, 24 and 25, and it says, Amplified Classic Version, that's the version that I read from, that I teach from, why? Because it's meaty, <clears throat> the enemy don't want you to have no meat, the enemy, the devil don't want you to have no meat, baby. You got to get up early to get me. So listen, right now, I just felt right here this very second by uh, just by Holy Spirit to proclaim a blessing on you guys that come to this early morning class all of the time. And even you guys who happen to uh, be passing by the classroom and decide to stop. So right now, in Jesus' name, I proclaim a blessing over you, a special blessing, a special anointing would even rain down on you, even as you're listening to this class firsthand right here, uh, present to the moment. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. I decree and declare that there will be no distractions, no hindrance, no, no blockages that would prevent you from hearing the word of the Lord, from hearing the nugget that you need to hear today in order to break through in a new way. I hear the Lord saying that this is definitely a time of breakthrough in a new way, that even he will heal you, he will deliver you, he will set you free in a new way. And that those places, those places that have caused the dismantling in your heart, those places that have called much wounding in your heart, even those places are being healed in the name of Jesus. And that those places, those inarticulate places that you can't even describe, even DNA pain and DNA uh, issues, God is able to heal and that he is healing even on the inside of you in the name of Jesus, that the dreams, visions that you will begin to have will begin to be, guess what? Dreams and visions of times past, but in those times past, you're even going to see where the Lord Jesus was in those very desperate moments. And you are going to, by the spirit of God, be able to to reclaim that time. You're going to be able to reclaim those moments of pain. You're going to be able to reclaim what the enemy stole from you. You're going to be able to reclaim those years that the pummel worm and the canker worm has eaten up in your life. You are going to be able to reclaim it in Jesus name. And you're going to be able to put a new name on that thing to reclaim. You have to rename to reclaim even those places of, 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 of distraction, those places of pain, those places of misery that has happened in your life. You are going to be able to rename it and reclaim it 
for the kingdom of God. And those things are going to push you forward in such a greater momentum in order to cause you to flow in your now season, preparing you for what is next. God wants you to prepare now for what is next. God wants you personally to prepare now for what is next so that when next comes, you're not caught off guard. He wants you to prepare now for what's next. And one of the things that fasting will do is help you prepare right now for what is next. What's what you talking about? What is next? The next level of promotion, the next level of, of open doors, the next level of healing, those next levels the father has for you, the next level in your relationship with him because God has all intensive purposes, intensive purposes to call us from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. God is not stopped. He is a glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Woo! And I can clap by myself. Listen, if you are feeling any kind of intensive warfare, it's because the enemy's mad and it's called opposite confirmation. That's okay. Let him be mad, boo. Let him be mad. That's it. So we were reading from, well, I hadn't started reading. Let me read. Romans 7 verses 24 and 25. I want you to know that this ain't the season to give up. You hear me? This ain't it. This is, we, mm -mm, we ain't done. We ain't even got started yet. This is not it. So listen, Romans 7, verse 24 and 25. Oh, unhappy and pitiable and wretched man that I am. This is the apostle Paul talking. That I am. Who would release me and deliver me from the shackles of this body of death? Oh, thank God. He will through Jesus Christ, the anointed one, our Lord. So then I indeed, listen, so that I indeed of myself with my mind, you need to say with my mind, baby, and my heart, I serve the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin, with my mind and my heart, I serve the law of God. But with all of this here, the flesh. The, the, the two-year-old having the fits and the 12-year-old on the inside of us that's popping their lips and, 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 and twisting their neck, uh, the law of sin. You have an adamant two-year-old. It don't make any difference how old you are. You still have a two-year-old on the inside of you called the brat, called the flesh. That's like, oh, I'm doing what I want to do because I'm grown. Who has said ever in their lifetime, you can't tell me nothing because I'm grown. <laughs> Come on, raise your hand. Haven't you said you can't tell me nothing to anybody? Or you have said, I'm an adult. I've said, I'm grown. I'm an adult. Guess what? That's how your flesh is. <laughs> Your flesh, your flesh is like that. Your flesh will tell you, you ain't telling me nothing. I'm going to hit the snooze again because I'm grown. I'm an adult. I can do what I want to do. But listen, fasting, fasting will get your flesh in order. Yeah, fasting will get your flesh in order. Mm -hmm. so, so, I pay my bills. Don't nobody pay. Yeah, that's the flesh. That's the flesh's attitude. But fasting is one of the ways. I would say fasting is one of the main ways we pull our flesh into subjection and tell that brat to sit down and shut up because you're going to obey the will of God. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is like, I want the will of God. The flesh is like, honey, I want some Twinkies. And Netflix. <laughs> but God has given us the power and the authority to do that. So listen, I got this book. I'm going to read the declaration scriptures for today. Today is day number two. 
Go ahead, Miss Virginia, down here, and, <laughs> and you two got our hand up like, yes, that's my flesh too. It's it's a brat. So listen, day number two. Day number two. I'm gonna read this really quickly, and then we'll get into today's. We're starting at uh, number seven in the handout from yesterday, the twelve rewards of fasting. That's on the website too. Okay. Mm-hmm. You right, Miss Lisa. The kingdoms are at war. Kingdom of the flesh, which the devil is riding in on, and the kingdom of God. But God has given us the authority to take authority over it. Okay, so the scriptures for today, which is day number two, is coming from Daniel 10, 12 to 14, John 8, 31 and 32, and Matthew 6 and 10. Daniel 10, 12 and 13. 12 to 14 says, then he said, do not be afraid. Listen, since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself, fasting is humbling ourselves before the Lord. Okay. Humble yourself before God. Your words was your words were heard and I've come to respond to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. I thought that was interesting, and I, under, I underlined it too. 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me because I was detained there. Because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concern for the vision concerns a time yet to come just what the lord was saying about preparing you now for a season and for a time to come okay so here the angel that came to daniel was an angel to deliver answers that's good it was an angel to deliver answers god has angels to deliver answers to us that's good. And it, there was a fight. There was a war for 21 days. And so Daniel had to continue to press through. All right, John 8, 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. One of the things fasting will do is reveal the truth of God to you. OK, remaining in his word, remaining on this path, not giving up when the fasting gets hard. OK. And the last scripture is Matthew 6 and 10, enforcing the kingdom of God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So your kingdom come, your will be done. It is God's will that we fast, man. It is. So yesterday. Uh, just people just are commenting in some of the videos and and answering each other's questions and, and people. And if you have special medical considerations, it's OK to seek your doctor out or do your own research. We try to act like that. We're going to seek out the doctor. No, you know, you know, y'all don't talk to the doctors that much, because as we have seen the last couple of years, there has been a uh, a a a, a conspiracy not conspiracy. There's been a conglomeration of uh, foolery in the medical field, right? No, I'm gonna I'm take a sip while y'all think on that. I gotta get a blue cup to match this room. I'm gonna get a blue cup today. This don't match. There's been a, a whole conglomeration of foolishness in the medical field. So it's not always profitable. Now, I'm not telling you not to because I'm not a medical doctor. But I will tell you this. Pray, seek the Lord, do your research and find out how God wants you to do this. OK, and then somebody chimed in with somebody else. Well, you can fast, you know, you can fast from social media and from Facebook. Well, this is this is the issue with that. Let me tell you the issue with that, Linda. The issue with that is that we don't need those things to live. So those things are not a sacrifice. Wait. Wait. 
That's why those things are not a sacrifice because you don't need those things. We didn't need those things. You need food to live. You need water to live. You don't need Facebook to live. You, you, you don't need social media. You, you don't need TV to live. You don't need any of that to live. We're talking about a living sacrifice, something that we sacrifice. And so she was trying to give somebody else some medical advice. Well, you can fact, I have an eating disorder. No, the eating disorder is that you eat too much for the majority of us. And I'm not talking about, and you know what? There are principles that can break the demonic power over eating disorders, which are birthed out of fear. What's your eating the what's your eating disorder? I'm a binge eater. What does that mean? You eat too doggone much. And you need to fast and hear God. And God knows your situation. All right. So you can say, God knows my situation. God, God knows I eat too much. Don't nobody want to talk about that? God knows I eat too much. I wouldn't have this extra person sitting in my lap. Now, through fasting, God will begin to deal with some deep-seated issues as to why the food industry, and we'll get on into that in the next teaching, is a gazillion industry, gazillion dollar industry. And we are addicted. We are addicted. We are addicted to the chemicals and the processing and the fake food. Talking about fake news. We are, we are addicted to fake food. And God will begin to deal with those issues in your heart that causes us. God will deal, deals with us, with the issues in our heart that causes us to turn to the chemicals instead of turning to him. All right, let's get on into this teaching. Let's talk about a bundle of reward. Talking talk, talking about the bundles of rewards that come as a result of us sacrificing our flesh, putting our flesh on the altar and allowing it to be burned so we can feast on God. Fasting from the world and feasting on God. So there are things that we need to do while we are fasting, okay? So we're going to start with number seven. That's where we left off at yesterday. Number seven, your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Your righteousness will go before you. This is all coming out of Isaiah 58. Your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard, your righteousness, the, 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 your stance, you being righteous and holy before the Lord. This is not about the 12 rewards of perfection. We're not talking about being perfect here. We're talking about pursuing the heart of God. I like that. We're not talking about perfection. We're talking about going forward and pursuing the heart of God by putting your flesh on the altar and denying your flesh what it wants. Your flesh wants to glut. Your flesh wants to watch TV nonstop. Your flesh wants to do what it wants to do. But when we decide, fasting is always voluntary. Ain't nobody going to make you fast. Fasting is voluntary, but they understood in the Old Testament, they understood in those times that, that God was all or nothing. There wasn't, there wasn't no grace. Mm-mm, there -mm, was no grace. Wasn't no, mm -mm, nope. When God, listen, when Jonah went to Nineveh, everybody had to fast. Why? Because everybody being in compliance to the command of God, to the command of the people, of the leaders, because they knew that if they did not bring the whole nation into a fast so that the whole nation can turn back to God in repentance, that God was going to destroy the city. Why do you think devastation hasn't happened the way that some have been proclaiming? And if you've noticed those doomsday, those, the doomsday prophets, where they at? You know why? Because just like Abraham was talking to God, there's some righteous folks here. 
Do you hear me? There's some righteous people here. There are some sons and daughters. And God said, he ain't going to do. I'm not. No, he told them about Sodom and Gomorrah. I won't destroy the city if there's these many people there, if there's these many righteous people there. And you know what? There's some righteous people in these here United States. There's some righteous people even in the countries where there are wars. There are righteous people. And we are praying and fasting and believing on their behalf for supernatural breakthrough and turnaround in Jesus' name. Since we all know the feeling of adversity, but this promise is that there will be no frontal attack and God himself will protect us from the things that will come up behind us, the ones we don't see or expect. God's like, there's, there's not, we, we, he will not allow anything without first warning us, without us first having a dream, a vision, a thought, so that we're not caught off guard. God is like, I don't want you to be ignorant of Satan's devices. And now is the time, rest, relax, and prepare. Don't be so happy and excited because things are now opened up that we're not still in a preparation mode, okay? Because the enemy is still like, yeah, you sleeping now. Sleeping in your vacation and all over the place. And while things seems real quiet, he's planning, but fasting will keep your spiritual ears open to say, okay, what's going on? What's going on? Let me be sharp. Don't let me fall asleep, God. Number eight, then you will call and the Lord will answer. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. Says having quick answers to prayer is wonderful. During and after a fast, you will find that prayers are answered at lightning speed. You will pray, oh Lord, please. And bam, the answer will zap you before you finish. You will get answers. You'll get clarity. You will get God's information, his strategies for our life. And this, this is it. This is our portion. This is not pie in the sky. This is not in the sweet by and by. No. God is like, I want my sons and my daughters to have answers. But guess what? The answers come as a point of clarity. Sometimes God is ready to give us the answer. But we're so foggy in our head. We're so disillusioned in our head that we can't even hear it. We can't hear the answer. I was just meditating out loud, talking to the Lord out loud and thinking, you know what, Lord, all these, all these years, there's been so many years in my life when I've spent so much time grabbing, grabbing what I wanted. I pray the answer don't come fast as I wanted to. So I just go grab and get it. And that's how we have done food. That's how we've done movies. I mean, it's it's so easy for us to sit in front of the TV for a two-hour movie, but God say, okay, come pray for 30 minutes. <sighs> Is that true? Read your Bible for two hours. <laughs> And there are demons that will distract you. There are people that you ain't talked to in months. You finally decide to set your heart towards seeking the Lord. Your phone is ringing off the hook. All kind of notifications coming through. In order to distract you and pull you out of your commitment. So God wants to give us answers. But we're not always in a place to where we can hear them. God always gives us answers, but we're not always in a place that we are mature enough to handle the answer. Sometimes you're not mature enough to handle the answer. Raise your hand. Sometimes, if you know what you, sometimes you're not mature enough to handle the answer. I want answers. You're not mature enough. Fasting is one of the things that will mature you in the spirit. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're not mature enough to handle the mantle, to handle the platform, to handle the promotion. Sometimes we are not mature enough and we miss it. I've missed God. 
I sure have. But when you start to fast and you start to pray and ask God for supernatural doors of entry and, and those supernatural doors, listen, those doors will come as a, a still small voice too. But are you sharp enough in the spirit that you'll hear it? Let me make sure I got ink pen somewhere. Because I always got to write something. Excuse me. What's an ink pen? There you go. All right. I just need, I, I just love to write. So anyway, sometimes we're not mature enough. So fasting is one of the ways that will get your flesh in order and help you to mature. Okay. So listen, it goes on the right. One time I was flying to Holland and the Dutch stewardess seemed to know only one English phrase. There you, there you are. It says she helped me get my suitcase under the seat and said, there you are. Is that she walked by and filled my coffee cup and said, there you are. No less than 25 times she said that to me. Says not only did I get a good laugh out of that, but I also got a picture of what God will do for us. We'll ask for his assistance and immediately with the provision delivered, he will say, there you are. There you go. There you are. All right, number nine, then your light will rise in obscurity and your darkness will be as the noonday. It says the darkness that you have walked through is going to be broken and your success will shine forth. The darkness that you are enduring, okay, will, will rise in obscurity. Your light will rise in obscurity. Uh, I was singing prophetically one morning that to hold on because... Uh, morning is coming. Morning is coming. But we've got to be in a position in our hearts and in our spirits where we are ready to receive what morning looks like. Listen, morning will not look like what we have constructed in our minds because we have what's called an imagination. 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 Honey, your imagination will mess you up. Hello, your imagination will mess you up and don't 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 add the enemy's ingredient to it because he will have a magnification and an imagination that will get you way off base from what God has purpose for your life. He will get you imagining that this brand new spanking new electric car, honey, is going to be the best thing you have ever, ever had in your life. He ain't going to tell you the truth. Of them $500 car payments. <clears throat> now he ain't gonna tell you that. So you better pray. You better pray and fast and ask God. I already know what my answer is. He looked at me like, really? He's like, is there anything wrong with your car now? No. Mm -mm. Have I made provision for you to get this car with ease? No. Do you really need a TV up in the console while you driving? No. Do you do you need extra heated seats? Because you hot already, Lacey. No. Well, what you... <laughs> What you think my answer gonna be, Lacey? No, exactly. No, uh-uh. Why? Because God wants to give us his best, but the word of God says that the blessings of the Lord will make you rich and won't add any sorrow. And I'm like, Lord, you know what? Let me just be honest. It'd be cute, but that, that's gonna add a whole lot of sorrow. I can see it's gonna add sorrow. That car is more than a house. That car is a is a house a down payment. No. <laughs> All right. So God wants your light to rise in obscurity and the darkness be as the noonday. What darkness is covering your mind while you can't see his answers? God knows when to put us 
where he wants to put us. He knows. God knows what he's doing. And you know what? Fastly we get this flesh under subjection because our flesh is like, he don't know what he's doing. He taking too long. God, you taking too long. You taking too long. Well, how about God saying, I'm trying to mature you so you can be in a place to when I give you the promise, you won't squander the promise. You won't trade the promise for temporary thrills. You won't trade the promise for the works of the flesh. You won't trade the promise to get your flesh fulfilled. All right. Number 10 says the Lord will guide you continually. It says guidance can come from all sorts of ways. He, then he says, once I was on vacation and I heard about a certain coming, I heard about a certain up and coming company. As I was praying, God said, buy it. So I called the church from the hotel and said, buy shares in this company. In less than a year, that stock had more than double and we sold it for a nice profit. I would like to be guided like that all the time. I would like to be guided like I want to be guided like that all the time. We really shortchange God. And by shortchanging God, we shortchange ourselves because God is like, I want to give you million dollar ideas. I want to give you supernatural increase if your head was clear enough to hear me. <laughs> Supernatural wealth, supernatural increase. If your head was here, if your head was present to the moment to hear what I'm saying and come out of that place of double mindedness, like we read over in James and quit doubting that I'm saying exactly what I'm saying to you when I'm saying it. So you will move in what I'm saying when I say it. So you will reap the blessing of what I have already ordained for you when I said it. Is anybody here or is it just me that's excited? Because I'm like, God, I want to live out of a supernatural guidance. Jesus said that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What is God proceeding out of his mouth? What is he saying to you today? What is he saying to you today about what, which way, what direction? Needing to stop, me needing to stop and ask Holy Spirit, what is it that I need to do today? And he might say, I need you to go to Walmart in aisle number four on the grocery side. I need you to go to Goodwill. I need you to go down this road. I need you to go down that road. Why? Because maybe destiny for you or destiny for somebody else is waiting there. We hold the key. Say, I hold the key. I wish I had my keys over here. You hold the key to unlock somebody. You have keys, boo, <laughs> to unlock people. And sometimes only you have that key. And it may be a once in a lifetime moment for them and once in a lifetime for you. I got keys. He said, I'll give you the key to the kingdom. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm going to give you something. And whatever you buy will be bound. And whatever you lose will be loose. We have the keys. Jesus gave us the key. And he said over in, oh, goodness, where is it? I think it's, is it Daniel? I'm not sure. Well, he says, I'm going to give you the key of David. I'm going to give you something. I give you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you a key. And your key is going to unlock this lady named Sarah that's going to be in aisle number three at the local Walmart. Now, are you going to be stubborn and stuck in your ways? Or are you going to hear me and meet Sarah walking down aisle number three in Walmart and deliver to her the word that she's been praying and asking God for for the last 21 days? Listen, that's what happened with Daniel. Listen. God said, listen, the moment you prayed your prayer, I was sending an answer. I sent the answer. But there was warfare. And you're in the middle of your 21-day fast. 
you're you're right at the beginning and god said i need you to go there because you're gonna see her and she's gonna be on the verge of giving up and i need you to deliver this key to her are right, we gonna be like god i got things to do today so then we miss out on being a destiny carrier for somebody else and they miss out on their moment of visitation because of us being stubborn. That's just how serious it is to being sons and daughters of God and having Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And I know we all have felt that. I know I, all of us have felt that. We've been minding our own business and we'll hear Holy Spirit say, go do this and says, well, uh, I need a confirmation. And God is like, these people are on the verge of taking their life and you need a confirmation? <laughs> Listen, because it's like, all right, I'm going to get to the other ones. Don't worry. But it's like if somebody passes out or whatever and you need to do CPR, listen, now, now they've changed the rules of CPR so you don't have to do mouth to mouth, but then chest compressions and all that. You don't need no daggone confirmation to give chest compressions, do you? <laughs> Come on. You don't need a confirmation. Well, I need, I need a confirmation. And the person laying there on the floor with their life about to leave. Come on, help me. Do you do you need a confirmation to give chest compressions to your loved one? What about Sarah and owl number three? What if that's what what if that's the destiny key today? And she passes out right there before you. And her children might be in the basket screaming and yelling and crying for their mama. Are you gonna wait for? Are you gonna wait for a confirmation to start doing chest compressions? We have the chest compressions from the Holy Spirit to give to people who have passed out spiritually, naturally. They've given up on life. They're done. They're finished. I, I ain't doing life no more. I don't want to do it. I'm finished. I do not want to do not one more day. And they just decided when I go home, this is it. I'm finished. And we see them every day. We walk right by. We drive right by. People needing chest compressions in the spirit. People needing to know. People asking, God, do you see me? Do you even hear do you care? God, do you care? Does anybody care? And they're out there asking God, do you care? And you walking around with their key. Woo, honey, honey, honey. So God wants to give us supernatural increase. He wants to give us answers. He wants to give us answers for other people. We fatten the spirit and fatten the natural too. Why you fatten the spirit? Because you're full of answers. You're full of somebody else's answers. Ain't that something? You're full of answers. You're full of somebody else's answer. God, help our, help our laziness. Fasting will sharpen you like a pencil. Put that pencil. Y'all remember them old pencil sharpeners in school? You stick that pencil in and you start grinding it, grinding all that non-essential wood off of it. So it can be sharp. The tip can be sharp. So when you meet Sarah on aisle number three, bam, you'll say the right word at that very moment. And it'll open her up. And she'll get an answer from the Lord. Oh, my God, you heard me. I just prayed that. Oh, my God, you heard me. And she's bawling and she's crying. And she's like, God, you heard me. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Number 11. Listen, the Lord will satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones. Not fat, not fat bodies, but fat bones, thick bones. It says once your health springs forth, God keeps you healthy through fasting. Honey, there's so much. Oh, well, let me read the rest of this. Oh, my goodness. God will keep you healthy 
through fasting, not only that, but you will have a divine supply no matter what. It says you may get a pink slip on Monday, but you will know that God will provide. Fasting helps you not only to live from paycheck to paycheck, but promise to promise. You know what? Fasting will give you, fasting will give you your answers. Quit looking for a confirmation from a man and look for instruction from God. Quit looking for a confirmation from man and look for instruction from God. Declare a fast and see what Holy Ghost got to say about it. Glory be to God. God, I'm done. I'm done trying to figure this out. I'm declaring a fast. Join the fast. Join it. Go to the website. Get all the free resources and get on your face and say, God, I'm going to stay here. Put this flesh on the altar till I hear you talk to me about what it is I'm supposed to do. Glory to God. Fasting is good for your health. So you can go from promise to promise and not paycheck to paycheck. I'm tired of going from paycheck to paycheck. Go from promise to promise. God said from faith to faith and from glory to glory, from promise to promise. Fasting will sharpen you. Fasting will say, God, I'm done trying to figure this out. And I'm not going to sit here and stuff myself with this natural stuff that ain't giving me no answers. <sighs> Honey, because the flesh wants you to move fleshly. But the flesh will never have an answer that will satisfy you. That's why number 11, it says, and the Lord will satisfy you in drought and make fat your bones. He will heal you. There's scientific research, of course, about the benefits of fasting and what it does to you. There's a point naturally in the fasting course uh, intermittent fasting or long-term fasting, when you get in, get to this place called autophagy. Autophagy is where you have fasted in such a way until your body starts to repair itself. It's a systems that will never let the righteous go hungry. He said, David said, I was young. And now I'm old. And I've never. Go I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. And I declared I ain't ever going to be. Ever. My whole life. I ain't begging for nothing. Nope. Why? Because those who are obedient to God will not be. And I ain't talking about now. Oh, I'm obedient to God. I'm talking about Lord. I want to drop kick some people, but that ain't your way. I'm going to pray for them. <laughs> I'm going to pray for them. I ain't going to drop kick them. I'm going to pray for them because that's your word. And he says, well, good. Autophagy is bad to the bone. Autophagy, that is when your body begins to repair itself. God has, listen, and I said this the, yesterday. If anybody on here has dealt with long COVID sy symptoms, you, you got COVID, you had COVID, you, you're dealing with long COVID symptoms. Listen, it. I'm look, honey, look up the research. It will blow your mind. People who were sick with cancer, people who were sick with all, uh, with, with diabetes, people who were sick in their body, declared fast. Uh, one guy in this same study went on a supervised fast, even through his doctor. He went and he told his doctor what he wanted to do. And the doctor said, okay, I want to oversee your fasting. The doctors are in agreement with it. A lot of them are. And I want to oversee your fasting. And so that guy did that 70 years old. He was sick in his body and through a long stint of fasting, his body started to heal itself. God put in us. He put in our DNA already the component it needs to repair itself. And fasting is one of the ways that it does. It will do that. Why? Because it starts to eat up all of the disease and the bacteria in your body. 
it'll eat up that fogginess in your brain. You will become clear. If you have addictive patterns of behavior, you're addicted to sugar, addicted to nicotine. If you are addicted to chemicals in your body, declare a fast. God put it in us to repair ourselves. How do you think your wounds heal? How do you think our wounds heal when we were kids? Fall, scrape your knee. Mama clean it up with a little bit of alcohol. That it will sting. Sometimes she put a band-aid over, but then there came a time when she had to take the band-aid off. And she say this because it will not heal unless the air gets to it. Your body knows what it needs to do, but we're putting so much junk in it and it's mixed up all of the signals. And now we're seeing, and now the real reports are coming out. <clears throat> Let me sip right here. Concerning a certain thing that wanted to give our body a different message. And now they're telling the truth that that stuff attaches to your DNA. It attached to your DNA. And stuff, my friend, Miss Condra, man, oh, this conversation. God gave her a supernatural revelation. One day, as my, one day soon, uh, she going to go live from my page and she going to explain exactly what the Lord told her. And that because of trying to put another message on top of the message, God has already given to our DNA. It is mixed up the signals and the thing that our DNA, our red blood cells, our white blood cells were fighting. And now it's broken down the wall. It's put pinholes. Listen, listen, when I work in central processing, we had this lighted table. And this was before we went to um, paper paper wrapping for the materials. We had this lighted table, and this is it. So when we when when the claws would come back, all clean and everything, we had to examine it under the un, under the lighted table. And we put it down. We turn the table on, and we will look for pinholes. And when there were pinholes. We had to discard it. We had to throw it away. Why? Because it wasn't any good if there's a pinhole in it. Why? If there was a pinhole in it, that means bacteria could sneak through it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? That stuff started poking pinholes in the DNA structure. Is anybody getting that? It started it, it started punching pinholes in the DNA structure. And instead of them admitting that, instead of them admitting that it was doing damage, they tried to cover it up with another one. And another one. And now I just heard that they're still talking about another one and a yearly one. And it's still punching pinholes. And everything that God has designed our DNA, our white blood cells, our red blood cells, pancreas, liver, kidney, spleen to, uh, to, to, to get out of our system. Heart, our muscles, the sinew, everything that it was already designed to kick out. I know a lot of people was lost, but we understand that a lot of those people had pinholes already. And I'm not making light of it. I'm just letting you know that there's been some 98 years that have come back from it. Why? Because the body knows what it needs to do. So instead of them admitting, you know what? We wrong. We, uh-uh, no. Nope. Let's do more and do more and do more. But God said, I want to restore your health. I want to have your body do what I designed it to do. I designed your body to fight bacteria. I designed it to do that. I designed your DNA in order to fight off it foreigners. And I started pleading the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covered. 
you're denied access, devil. That's what I thought. Now, that's what I do. I said, no, you, you, you denied access. Every germ, every virus, every bacteria, amoeba, ev everything. You denied access from entering my body because the blood of Jesus covers me. And you know what? If ever I do physiologically, I don't talk about it. I don't give it any access. And I ain't saying they're not, there are not times when I don't feel well, but this is what I have learned to do. I ain't going to give you access. I ain't going to even talk about you. How about that? We ain't going to talk. This is what we're going to do. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus. And if I need to drink down some night quill, so be it. But we're going to plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. I don't do sick. Sick is, sickness is not in the kingdom. So I get to bind you in Jesus name. And now with the power of fasting too. Okay. I see what's going on up in here. We declare a fast. We're going to shut everything down. We're going to eat clean for we We're doing a Daniel fast. We ain't doing nothing but fruits and vegetables and water. That's what we We ain't doing nothing but water. Fruits and vegetables. If you ain't going to die. You got 20 pounds worth of cookies around your hip. You're not going to die. All right. Let's get the number two. Hell, is this helping anybody? I hope it is. I hope it's helping you. I really, really do. This is not pie in the sky. This is reality. This is real, practical. Come on, honey. Don't talk about the fat neck. I'm getting some relief all up in here because it was just hot. All up in the crevices. Hot in the crease. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Don't talk about the fupa. Lord have mercy. Could you deliver me from the fupa? He was like, declare fast. Then your morning will spring forth and your football will dissolve in Jesus' name. God help me. <laughs> he let the clear fast because the food ain't the issue. It's your heart that's attached to it. We're going to talk about food being idolatrous. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to deal with that. He's like, the food ain't the issue. It's the, it's the food. It, it's, your, it's your emotions. It's everything you attach to it. You're not using it for fuel. You're using it for fun, excitement, company, a lover. And, and it's perpetuated by TV. What is that? Fiera Rocher. A woman laying in the... What's he going to be laying down on the couch with a chocolate piece of nougat? Um, um, I'm like, it's candy. Come on. So all of those things are attached to how we see the very thing God is telling us to let go of because there's more of, a, of, a, of an attachment to it. I'm like it's just it's just it's just chocolate candy. It's not a roll around in the bed, but they want to equate it to that. Sure do. I'm gonna tell the truth. Mm, I'm gonna tell the truth, and I'm like it is not that deep, girl. Mm -mm. And it's uh, mm -hmm. they don't show you the end result, Linda. They don't show you the end result after you done ate five boxes of the Fiera Rocher. And you done gained about eight pounds. You be like, what? Fierra will be all around your hips like, hi. What's your name? I'm Fierra Roche. You remember you ate two boxes of me last week? You be like, uh, what? And your brain foggy. Girl, the devil is a liar. Somebody, some, some got to give. Mm, I can't do it. I, I can't do it no more. I can't. It's going to be summer. It's going to be hot. And I'm going to be hot -er. Declare fast. Get free. <laughs> That's funny, but it's true. Get free. Then you over in the summertime, it's 89 degrees. And on the inside, it feels like you 112. And Lord help us. This is going through a, the transition in life <laughs> with the extra, extra hotness. And then all of the emotions that come along with it. Can we just be real, man? Uh, okay, let's get to this last one. Your children, your children will build up the broken places. It says you will be called the repairers of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. God is going to use you to turn wastelands 
into fruitful orchards. Relationships that have gone sour can be restored with fasting. You will come into an overflowing, excuse me, abundance. Don't these sound like wonderful rewards? I know you have rewards that you're seeking. Why not write them down and plan a fast? You have nothing to lose except a few pounds. You're going to lose a few pounds. But God will certainly show himself faithful so that we turn our focus from the natural to the spiritual so that we can become repairers of the breach so that we can hear God's answers and instructions on what to do. Don't you know one word from the Lord can change the whole trajectory of a relationship. Mm -hmm. It can change a person's whole life. That key that you have that's locked on the inside of you for Sarah in aisle number three at the Walmart this afternoon. And God may tell you, hey, I need you to go to Walmart. You're like, I don't need nothing at Walmart. He said, but I need you to do something at Walmart. Mm -hmm. What do you need me to do at Walmart? Somebody's looking for a key and you got it. Somebody's looking for their nighttime to turn to morning and you got the key. Somebody's waiting for supernatural breakthrough and I gave you an answer for them. Somebody needs prayer for healing and you got it. Somebody's ready to turn the corner and I gave you the instruction to help them. Now, what you going to do with it? How you going to hear? How they going to hear without a preacher? And we're not talking about a preacher standing in a church behind a pulpit. He's talking about somebody who will proclaim, proclaim. And then it says, how shall they preach unless they be sent? God is trying to send you. He's trying to send you. He's trying to send you to Walmart, Myers, Walgreens. The Piggly Wiggly, Costco's, Wal uh, uh, Sam's Club. He's trying to send you on your workplace with keys and answers for other people. But if we are stuck here, cloudy here, remember that scripture, that Romans 7, 24 and 25, 25. So with the mind and the heart, we serve the law of God but with the flesh, the law of sin. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's the law of God and the law of sin. With the mind and with the heart, we serve the law of God. God is wanting to talk to you. You hear, you will hear him here and you hear him here. These two places, your heart of heart. And you say, God, I know you want me to do this. I don't understand it. But that law of sin, if the law of sin is having a fit that day and we haven't brought it into subjection, the law of sin would be like the law of the flesh. Nope. Because I need prayer. Nope. Because I need a way. That's the, law. That's the law of the flesh that always has an issue. But you know what? You know what they actually are? They're excuses. They are excuses. They're excuses. And we're going to have to give an account for every excuse. We're going to have to give an account for every excuse. So I'm just do a really quick recap of this. So with... Uh, 1 through 12, a quick recap. Number one, it will, you have to determine your fast. Write down what it is that you really, that you're really seeking God for. Okay. So the thing that the fast does, number one, it will loose the bands of wickedness. Okay. 
Number two, all of this is from Isaiah chapter number 58 two. Number two, it will undo heavy burdens, okay? Number three, it will let the oppressed go free. Number four, it will break every yoke. I love that song. There is power in the name of Jesus to break it, be chain, break it, be chain, break it, be chain. But you got to do something else. <laughs> that's wonderful. And, and that's true. But you know what? Let me tell you this. I sang worship for years, honey. And I would go home and turn my tail up almost living on the inside. Can you say living on the inside of my refrigerator, trying to stuff and numb all of those unresolved issues? So singing a cute song does not equate to freedom. Do you hear me, Linda? Singing a cute song don't equate to freedom. Mm-mm. I hear that chains falling. No, I didn't. All I was hearing was the, the, the forks and the knives going into the sink after I got done stuffing myself, trying to deal with the emotions that I wasn't willing to deal with. So a cute song does not equate to freedom. God uses worship. He does. He uses worship. He is worship. He loves worship. But we've got to deal with some real stuff. Because after we get done lifting up holy hands, if all of this is not healed, we're going to turn, we're going to lift up holy hands and we're going to come into our lives and then we're going to go in and we're going to start trying to fill our hearts instead of lifting up our hearts to him. And fasting is one of the ways, one of the main ways, as a matter of fact, to help us put our flesh. Fasting equips us, equips us and enables us to put our flesh on the altar. It's voluntary. Nobody makes you fast, but you will get answers. Okay, number three, I think I read that. Let the oppressed go free. Number four, break every yoke. Number five, then your light will break forth as the morning. Number six, your health will spring forth speedily. Number seven, your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Number eight, then you will call and the Lord will answer. Number nine, then your light will rise in obscurity and the darkness be as the noonday. Number 10, the Lord will continually guide you. The Lord will guide you continually. Number 11, the Lord will satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones. That deals with healing. Look up autophagy. It's amazing how God has equipped our bodies to heal itself. Even people who've gone through certain cancers have tried all of the man-made uh, treatments that made them sick. They said, you know what? I'm going to proclaim a fast. I'm fasting. The doctor knew about it. The doctor monitored them. They went over to a completely plant-based or just... Uh, did juicing of all types of fruits and vegetables, bam, the body repaired itself and people have come out cancer free because of obeying God, proclaiming a fast and God repaired through what he already put in us, okay? And number 11, your children will build up the broken places. You will be called. You would be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Those are the 12 benefits, the 12 rewards of fasting. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to go in more in depth on them individually. We're going to find out the health benefits. 
the spiritual benefit. And we are going to get a, a serious handle on how to fast. And you know what? I'm in the class too. I'm in the class of the Holy Spirit too, because I want to learn. I want to learn more. Always remain teachable and God will always teach you. You always remain teachable. God always teach you. He wants to. Holy Spirit is like, I want you to know. I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to know. So with that, my friends, that concludes today. Thursday, we're going to start a new part of it. I'll see how things flow with the rest of the week. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something on Saturday. Who knows? But right now, we're going to hit again on Thursday. And let me know how you guys are doing. You can inbox me. Drop me a DM and let me know how you're doing on your fast, okay? Also, don't forget, if you are ever in question on any of the resources, just go to the website. Go to that free resource page. And also, don't forget that these are recorded onto YouTube so you can go back again, get your notes, and go through it or just listen to it while you're doing your stuff around the house, driving back and forth to work, whatever that looks like, because God wants to bless us. He wants to increase us. So Father, I thank you for the teaching today. I thank you for the wonderful sons and daughters, my brothers and sisters in the Lord God, as we all begin to press in for more and more understanding and wisdom concerning fasting. It is our heart's desire to get this as a way of living because you want us to live a fasted life. I've always wanted to live a fasted life, but was never willing to commit to it. At this point in my life, I'm done and I'm ready. I'm ready to commit to whatever you want to do. And when I was driving here, I was just hearing, just sensing the Lord say for you to flow with him, flow with him, flow how he flows. Don't try to make him flow according to what you want. But just be in position and flow how God wants you to flow in this season and in the days of your life. For surely he has an expected end every single day already laid out for you. And he expects us to get to our expected end in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy for another day to journey with you in Jesus name. My only desire is to point you to the Father, as he's the only one. So please, Linda, don't be looking to me for answers, because I'm a student, too, with my ears open, saying, Father, I need you, too. Okay? All right. So y'all have a good day. I'll see you back here Thursday morning at the Lord Say the Same. All right? Okay.